Now we will move on to the next Dr. Palekar, please. Shubha Prabhatam, Honorable Chairperson of this today, IT and Professional Awareness Campaign Program, Manishri Mohanayaji, Retired Chief General Manager of NABAD, Honorable Ravind Rao, Chairman Telangana Cooperative Federation Apex Body, Manishri Sambadri Reddy, the President of Ram Bharati, Honorable Ekka Chandra Sekhar, Consultant of Ram Bharati, Honorable Sri Jalpat Rao, the former Register of Agriculture University, Telangana. Mr. Karunakaran, Gram Bharati. Subhash Lode and Mr. Chavan is the key persons of this workshop organizing committee. Both are having the software companies. Mr. Keshav Rahegaukar from Nanded is a important campaigner on, on social media. Mr. Benjamin came from France to listen this workshop. All the members of the Ram Bharti organizations, Mr. Vijay Ram, Vijay, a key person in this moment in Telangana, and the friends came from entire South India, IT sector, professionals, activists, social workers, and even prominent farmers also. I am very thankful to Gram Bharti organization and Mr. Subhash Lode and his colleague Mr. Chauhan. They have given me this opportunity to give my best services between this today on the subject zero budget natural farming and back to nature. I am also thankful Mr. Vijay Ramji. He has given the beautiful touch to the dais of ancient Indian rural civilization. You will see. And friends from media, maybe print media and electronic media, thanks for media personalities, they have given the widespread coverage for this workshop. Even in past also, they are giving the beautiful coverage for the Jirubayat natural farming. What is the aim of the human being. Everybody has a question in his mind, why the God has sent to me on the earth? What is the duty given by the God? And what I have to do for the society or nature? When anybody will born at the birth time, the hands are closed. Jab kisi bache ka janma hota hai, uski muthiya band hoti hai. But when he died 
the hands are open what is the reason what the god has given in the close hand at the birth time and why he is going living this earth with open hand there are some reasons at the birth time god has given some commitment in your close hand and when you die what you have earned you have to live on the earth which commit commitments have been given by the god in your close hand there are two commitments given by the god in the close hand one you do your work maybe social work to those people of the society which are who are extremely exploited by the system those have no any future their life is totally spoiled by the system you have to do your entire life social work for those exploited people this is the first commitment the god has given in your close hand and second commitment the god has given in your close hand that you have to reset the nature entire human beings are destroying the natural resources by their activities and lifestyle we have to reset the nature again we have to preserve and protect the natural resources again for future generations these are the two commitments the god has given in your close hands now i will ask you what you are doing in your routine life whether you are working for those people who are totally exploited by the system kya aap un logo ke liye kaam kar rahe hain jo pidit hai kashti hai shoshit hai jiska koi bhi nahi koi sanman nahi otherwise you are working for those people who have no problem they are the exploiter they are the supporter of the exploited system you have to ask this question to your mind so i thought this it sector specifically the software engineers highly professionals are the cream of the society highly intellectual and these people are spoiling entire life to support exploiter system because the exploiter system want to convert this cream of the society not to create the creation not to develop natural development of indian civilization but they have to utilize this cream of the society to support the exploiter system 
by the entire Indian community will be exploited. So I thought that we have to target this scheme of the society, we have to invite these people and we have to push these people for the creation, not a destruction. And I am very thankful to all of you. Maximum software engineers and professionals are participated in the workshop for the two-day workshop. This is the only two-day workshop because they have today, Saturday and Sunday, they are holidays. They can easily participate. So we have chosen only two-day workshop for you people. Satyu, what is our duty to solve the problems or to create the problems? What you are doing? You are creating the problems. One guna sekara. Chairperson, vice, vice chairman of software engineering company in England. He was having 24 lakh rupees package per year. One day he called me. Sir, I have seen your videos on YouTube. I am totally excited. And I am feeling that I am exploiting my entire life in this IT sector. I would like to visit you and I want to listen your workshop. I said, okay, you are welcome. You come to India and there is my workshop in South India. You are a South Indian person. You can participate. He came in India, he participated in my seven day workshop and he has gone to England again. He read my books, he visited the models. After six months, he called me. Sir, I have taken the decision to leave the job. Huh? Why? You are leaving the job? Yes, I have taken the decision. Have you asked your wife? Yes, sir. She is agree. I will give the mobile to my wife. And she said that, yes, sir. This decision is taken enormously by us both. 24 lakh rupee package. Vice chairman of a precious software engineering company. In Europe, he is taking the decision to leave the job, to join this movement. Why? If money is the ultimate aim of you people, why he is leaving job? If entire development process, so-called development process in entire world is going forward to collect and conserve the only wealth why Mr. Gunasekara has taken the decision to leave the job. That means current system is having some problems, some difficulties. Current system is not giving the solutions. On another word, I can say the money is not giving the solution. Money is producing so many problems. Satyu, 
Now Gunasekara is doing fantastic job in your Andhra Pradesh, Rayal Sima, Madan Palli, both couple is very happy. I will not pressure you to leave your job, not at all. I will not suggest you to leave your job, no. But while continuing your job and professions, you can do for society a fantastic job, no doubt, through this mass movement. Not is necessary to do your job and profession. What you can do for the society within Saturday and Sunday, this is the issue for today's workshop to discuss. Which of the problems entire human beings are facing? You can list the problems, so many, a big list. All these problems are not created by nature. Even global warming and climate change is not created by the nature. Food crisis is not created by the nature. Death pool diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart attacks are not created by the nature. Suicide of the farmers are not created by the nature. Migration of the youth from the rural area to urban area is this problem also are not, is not created by the nature. Splitting of the families also is not created by the nature. All these problems are created by only human being. And you are claiming the nature is responsible, God is responsible. How? Satyu, food crisis is the severe problem today. Food crisis. There is no solution with agricultural universities to solve this problem, food crisis. No solution the government has, any government, maybe state government, maybe government of India, or maybe another country's governments. They have no solution. NGOs also have no solution at all. These are the three sectors are the creators of the farmers, the problems. Specifically, agriculture universities are the main problem. Agriculture university is the big problem for human being. Who is the creator of the so many problems to the human being? When Pandit Jaharlal Nehru, the Prime Minister of India at that time, has given the assurance to the Parliament in his speech that we are accepting the Green Revolution to solve the food problem, to become India self-reliant in the food grain production. He has given the assurance before 60 years in the Parliament of India. Whether India is self-sufficient in the food grain production? The big question. 
All the agricultural universities claiming, oh yes, we are self-sufficient in the food and production by green revolution. Government of India claiming, yes, we are self-sufficient. These people are misguiding the nation when they claim that the nation is self-sufficient in the food and production by means of the green revolution. They are misguiding the nation. They are misguiding the farmers also. Specifically, agriculture universities. What is the definition of the green, uh, food grain in the dictionary? Only wheat means food grain. Only rice means food grain. In which dictionary it is given? Only rice is not the food. Only wheat is not the food. Food means the list of the entire food material. Maybe rice, wheat, jowar, bajra, maize, all the cereals, even all the billets, ragi, nauni, kodo, kutki, all the pulses, all the oil seeds, all the fruits, and all vegetables. This combinedly is called food in the dictionary. What is the situation? Whether we are self-sufficient in this all part of the food? There is a big question. The government of India is legally committed to give the answer. The agricultural universities also are legally committed to give the answer because they are getting the salaries given by the people of India through the direct indirect taxes. They are legally committed to give the answer. Legally committed to give the answer and solution also. But agricultural university has no solution at all. No answer they have. Why? Why they are getting the salaries? Satyu. In 2007, government of India has imported 150 lakh metric ton of the wheat from the international market. On the international price, $192 per ton to $219 per ton. Why? Every year, government of India is importing lakhs of the ton of the purchase from the international market. Why? Our domestic consumption of India of the purchase is 205 lakh metric ton per year. We are producing only 145 to 152 lakh metric ton per year purchase. There is a great deficit. So, Indian government is importing. 45 to 50 lakh ton pulses every year from the international market. Why? To import continuous every year lakhs of the pulses is self-sufficiency in the food grain production in which dish is written. These people are misguiding the nation. Even since my childhood, I am observing in the Russian shop, every Indian is getting some quantity of the palm oil, edible palm oil. Lakhs of the ton of the palm oil is imported for Southeast Asia by the government of India every year. Maybe Malaysia, Indonesia, Laos, Philippines and all other Northeast Indian countries. Southeast Asian countries. Why? Even lakhs of the ton of the soybean edible oil is imported from Canada, America, Australia and China every year. Lakhs of the ton of the edible sunflower oil is imported from South Rus and all other African countries every year. Why? 
That means these people are, when they claim we are self-sufficient in food and they are cheating, they are cheating, they are misguiding the nation. Even you go to the fruit shop, you will see there are apples and the sticker is attached. Imported from China, imported from New Zealand, imported from Australia. Why? Even we are importing maximum quantity of the imports from the international market. 100% potassium fertilizer are imported from international market by government of India. 72% phosphoric acid, that means the phosphoric fertilizers are imported from international market every year. 76% nitrogenous fertilizers and raw material of the nitrogenous fertilizers are imported from the international market every year. And so also they are claiming that by means of the green revolution we were self-sufficient, they are misguiding the they specifically government of India, agricultural universities and all these people who are the claimer. The reality is that, the reality it is that Never India was self-sufficient in the food grain production by means of the global, uh, your uh, green revolution. Today also is not self-sufficient and if the policy will be continued, same policy in the future also India will not become the self-sufficient in the food grain production. This is the big challenge, big challenge. Not only Indian people, entire human being, entire human being. We have to find out the solution from this challenge within these two days. What will be the, our role to solve this problem? We have to discuss today. The Planning Commission of India has given the target to the government of India that in 2060, uh, 2050, our population, Indian population will go up to the 160 crore. Now it is 123 crore. Now India is producing 25 crore metric ton of the food. And they have given the target to the government of India. In 2050, we want 50 crore metric ton of the food. That means double than today. Double than today. Whether it is possible to agriculture universities, let them to job, give the answer, they are committed, legally committed to give the answer because they are getting the salaries and funds also. The reality is that we have, our nation have only 35 crore acre land for cultivation purpose. That means 350 million acre land we have only. And by means of the chemical farming, the production per acre is reducing continuously. Whether it's correct or not, whether it's the reality or not, production is decreasing continuously per acre by means of the chemical farming. It is reality. 